15 not out. Oh, he's had a go. That has got him. He's out caught behind. He's got him. He's struck from around the wicket. A little flash at that ball outside off stump. And England never want to forget that. Every time he comes in, go around the wicket because he doesn't like it very much at all. There it is. A little faint nick. Way, way wide that one was. Straight through to the keeper. And so that's the end of a very useful knock from Kirtley Ambrose. It's 234 for nine. Four balls after that, and they were off for bad light. As for the batting, Greenwich and Haynes, a lovely partnership of 96, and then four wickets for four runs in eight balls. Noughts for best and Dujon. Richardson and Hooper, I thought, played the best attacking shots, a real fight back, but it was upset by a crazy run out. And then Ambrose and Bishop put on 34, 234 for nine at the close. It was Devon Malcolm, the destroyer, three wickets for no runs in four balls and five wickets in a test match for the first time in his career. He was the man who got the speed and the bounce, although, of course, he got very tired by the end. Another England victory. Well, when play began, the West Indies added a further five runs when Devon Malcolm, the man who did all the damage with those five wickets yesterday, bowled to Courtney Walsh. Oh, that will look straight, and that is out, and that's the end of the West Indies innings. It was low, it was straight. England batsmen will have noticed just how straight. So, this is how it went. Smack in front, and Walsh is LBW to Malcolm, and the total is 239, which means that England now have 151 runs to win this test match and go two up in the series. Yes, 151 runs. It seemed like a comfortable target. They had the time to get the runs if the weather held. Well, we're in the first over of the England innings. Bishop the bowler to Gooch. Oh, that was a vicious ball. That really was vicious, and the England captain did brilliantly to avoid that. Now that's what Haynes will be saying in the players. Let it go, quick bouncer, very straight. That's close, that's close, so, so close, but not out. Oh, some excitement there, some hearts are bounding for Larkins, the ball nipped back, possibly missing leg stump, just nipped back on it, but my goodness, if I'd have been batting, my heart would have been in my mouth there. Ambrose to Gooch, runs, overpitched, four runs, good blow for the England captain. Well, that's a good shot, magnificent shot. It's running away down towards the mid-wicket boundary. I think this will just about get there. No, it won't. It'll be stopped just short of the fence down there by Ezra Mosley. And he's got a lovely arm. So a good shot there from Larkins. A little bit of relief for him. Oh, he's hit that one. It's gone way down towards the boundary. This is a magnificent aggressive shot by Gooch. And I tell you, that is a very, very important psychological shot from England's point of view. That ball short and Gooch taking the positive approach here and hooking it to square leg. Well, Ian Bush a bowling shot to Gooch here and Gooch playing a very positive shot. Well executed hook shot, getting inside, eyes on the ball and hitting the ball over square leg for four. And I think the West Indians have to be careful here not to get too carried away with a short ball. They need to get the ball on a good length consistently and try to see if they can get a bit of help from the wicket. Ezra Mosley. Oh, what a delivery. This match is far from over. Anything can happen here and this is an example of a surprise for the batsman. Yes, mostly generating an extra bounce there, a bit of extra pace too, on the right line, and Larkins in the end doing well 
to keep out of the way of that one. He's out, got him, put behind, that's right, the West Indies have got him. Ezra Mosley this time round has found the edge of the bat and the West Indians have broken England's opening partnership. They've put together 27, this is how it happened, outside off stump, he's gone for the cut shot, a big nick there and this is a good catch by Dujon. It went quickly and so England 27 for one. Alex Stewart is the new batsman, and I'll tell you what, his heart will be pounding a bit. They've got them all around him. They've come in. Desmond Haynes has got a silly point, a forward short leg, a leg gully, a first slip, a second slip, a gully and a keeper. All around Stewart. This is Mosley. One ball to go this over. And straight away the bouncer whizzing over the top of that white crash helmet. Well, what a good over that was for the West Indies. They have struck. And this is the delivery, this is the welcome to the crease ball from Ezra Mosley flying over the white crash helmet there of Alex Stewart. He made nine in the first innings before he was caught behind and this is going to be a real test for him. It's a good firm drive, so Stewart gets off the mark, good positive shot and he'll get off the mark with three. Richardson, the fielder, having a long chase. So Stewart can breathe just a little bit easier now. Good positive stroke. England moving on to 31. Sliced away. And that's four. That's a bad bit of fielding by Ambrose. That really is slack work by Ambrose. He just seemed to have lost sight of the ball. Seemed very casual indeed. I think there might have been a bit of spin on this. You see Alex Stewart hitting the inside of the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if it just turns away to the left there, but it did look a badly timed left arm down by Kirtley Ambrose. Back to two slips in the gully for Gooch. He's fought his way through the nervous beginnings. But for the newcomers, Haynes has done it well. And just when he moves out a man, He's taken Gooch on the hand, that's the second time Mosley has taken Gooch on the hand, on that left hand with the very first ball he bowled to him and that's a nasty blow summoning the assistance from the dressing room It's just Ezra Mosley's length somehow, it wasn't do doing this for Kirtley Ambrose and the bounce is surprise and it's high and that cracks Gooch's hand against the bat handle. It would be a tragedy for England if he was seriously impaired. And Graham Gooch goes off the ground. Now, Laurie Brown seems to have advised him just to retire for the moment. They'll check it in the dressing room, no doubt. They'll be off to the hospital to have an X-ray to see if there's any fracture. Gooch has had to retire her on 18, and Alan Lamb will come out to replace him. No time for a learning curve here. Instant experience. Straight into the heat of the oven, and either you come out harder or you melt. Well, that was not very far away from the stumps. Well, that was a misjudgment there on Stuart's part. Well, that was an extraordinary uh, misjudgment. It's all nerves, of course. The involuntary movement, and he gets away with it. He's talking out his nerves. Certainly, Ian Bishop isn't in the business of conversation. touched it, luckily for Alex Short, he's got a touch onto it. Now come on Alec, get those feet going. Bit of movement there, a little faint tickle on the inside edge of the bat. It's very turned round, very turned round. 
fine bowling, excellent fast bowling. Just over pitching into the half volley and being driven away for three. So Alex Short under real pressure in the course of the over, still spotting the half volley and putting it away as he did in the last over. He gets three more and he now moves on to 11. through the offside by Lamb. So Bishop uh, just giving a couple of half volleys there towards the end of the over. Three more runs. Lamb is off the mark. And England pushing on. That's cracked away. That's a good positive shot by Adam Lamb. It was short. He was on the back foot waiting for it. This is Bishop again to Stewart. And that's well played. He'll get himself two here. So that reduces the runs required to exactly 100. It also brings up the 50 for England. 50 for one. Got that one away beautifully. That's a lovely shot by Lamb. Just a little bit wide. Lamb enjoyed that too. That one goes thudding into the Union Jack at backward point. A lovely shot. Yes, I don't think the bowlers can keep giving the England batsmen a chance to square cut and back cut them because they're bound to get some wood on some of them. Oh, it's out. Got him, LBW. No, he got an inside edge. They can't believe it. Mosley thought he had him. It must have been a bit of bat. Otherwise, it was all over. Oof. Well, Alan Lamb must have thought that was an obvious inside edge because he didn't really show the bat to the umpire straight away. There we are, absolutely plumb in front. The players are going up. My goodness. It must have been an obvious nick because Alan Lamb made no... no sign to the umpire bishop seven overs one made no wicket for 21 so he's off now he's going to be replaced by walsh and we smashed that it's going down to the boundary it will not be cut off that is a bad ball this is his first over a loose short delivery outside off stump and four more vital runs well, this is a poor ball. There's a loosening delivery, very, very wide. Not too quick. Gives Stewart plenty of time. The ball bounces nicely as well. Allows Stewart to deliberately strike it over the top of Gully. Oh, and that's a bad ball. He smashed that one away, and he won't be very happy with that. That was a lovely shot by Stewart. A good aggressive shot into the fence. In fact, it's stuck in the fence. Another lollipop short delivery, not too quick, nice true bounce, and he's cracked it harder and even better still, and squarer still for four. Majestic shot. Oh, he's got that one away magnificently too. This is turning out to be a little gem of an over from England's point of view. A short ball pulled away to the boundary, and a very, very expensive over, and... All credit yet to Stewart for taking advantage of this bad bowling. Well, another short lollipop delivery. I thought his ball badly this over as Walsh, and he's got severely punished by some good shots from Alex Stewart. Well, I've got some bad news for you. For those of you who think that um, England are on their way to victory here, it is starting to rain. Oh, it's in the air, and luckily for Stewart, it bounces short of gully. Now, we've seen him get out like this before, lifting his gloves with the ball. Well, that was a difficult ball to play. Look at it leap up high. A bit of good fortune there for Alex Stewart. Maybe he's deserved it. He's, had, he's tried so hard. Look at that getting up. 
will this one be in the same place? Oh, he's got it away magnificently for four. That is offline, and Stewart got in there behind it and whacked it down to the boundary right off the meat of the bat. What a great shot that was. He was waiting for another shot, pitch delivery. He's waiting for it on the back foot. Take that. Thank you very much. Well, it really is pouring down now. I feel certain that they've got to get together and um, get the covers on. If, if I was England, I'd want to be off here, really, quite frankly. This is quite heavy rain. I wouldn't want it on the pitch. It may make the ball skid through. They're going to put the tarpaulins on anyway, and that's going to help it to sweat with the rain underneath that's on the pitch. I really wonder. I'd be talking, if I was Alex Stewart and Lamb, I would be talking to the umpires. Yes, well, that's uh, the umpire, Lord Barker, said, do you want to stay out? Lamb said, yes, I do. And Haynes says, no, I don't. We'll go back in. So the umpire doing the right thing there, giving the option to the captains. Lamb said, we'll stay out here. And the fielding captain, who is just as entitled to be asked the question, because it's his ball that is getting wet out there, said, no, thanks, we'll go in. So off they go, and out come the covers. So, a depressing sight, rain stop play with England having made an excellent start, but that rain looked pretty well set. Lunch was taken, tea was taken, something like three hours play was lost before Alex Stewart and Alan Lamb resumed the run chase, 78 required. That was going to be Walsh again. We smashed that away, it's in the air, and he's got him, he's out, he's out, caught down at third man, right off the meat of the bat, that ball went flying down to Bishop, and didn't he take it easily? The West Indies have struck straight away, and that certainly brought a, brought a smile to their faces, have a look at this. Smashed away, high, down towards third man, Walsh didn't have to move, simply stood there, took the catch, and so that's the end of Alex Stewart. He's out now for 31, and the score is 74 for two. Well, Robin Smith is the new batsman. He's got a sweatband underneath the crash helmet. So Ezra Mosley again. Just has lengthened it slightly, coming tentatively through that brown area. Very, very small steps. Then he gets into the big strides. Oh, that's well bowled. Very well bowled indeed. He was... Um, that shot mostly again tentatively through that whitish patch watch him break into the long strides here oh and what a delivery that was i got a lot of time for this guy he's going to cause a lot of batsmen a lot of trouble 78 for two oh that's out plum lbw good night It seemed to me that there was a little double noise there, but Smith has been given out LBW to one that kept low, and Walsh has struck again. See if you can pick up any bat in this one. There it is, pitched. Kept low, I think it probably hit the pad first. His bat may have flicked his own pad. Was it gonna hit leg stump? Well, the umpire down that end is umpire Lloyd Barker, he thought so. And so another wicket has fallen. England on now 79 for three. Well, the new batsman, Rob Bailey, spare a thought for him. Out first ball in the first innings. He is on what they call a king pair. So Ezra Mosley now to continue. Rob Bailey is on strike. They're two steps in position. And Greenwich now trotting into his position quite square and deep in the gully. Mostly again. Oh, and what a delivery that was. No ball called. He was a little late getting his head out of the way, but he eventually had to jerk it back. Well, it's a fine greeting is this for Robert Bailey. Straight, quick, but it all counts as one run to the England total. Anything could happen here. 82 for three. Gooch has a bad hand, so that could effectively be 83 for four. And that could have been out. That went through him. It kept very low. I'm not 
pretty sure that England are going to get these runs. No, well, it's no good bowling rollers if they're not straight. No good at all. It's wasted, that, Ezra. You've got to get them straight. They get your wickets. They don't count them that miss the off stump. Goodness grief. If you'd have got that one straight, how do you play that? Oh, and that one stays down, and Lamb very quick to get rid of that. He tried to play a little paddle shot down towards the two men who are covering the square leg area. Didn't bounce very much. Well, there's nothing wrong with Alan Lamb's attitude here. Looking to paddle it round, the ball drops down off his thigh pad and arm, and quick as a flash, he's watching that ball. Look, there he is, he's watching it. Oh, my goodness me. That's well played by Lamb. He'll be looking for two here. In comes Kirtley Walsh. He's about to pick this up. He does one-handed, but that's good running by Bailey and Lamb. So two more to the total. 65 to get. Well, he's very watchful here, Alan Lamb. He just pushes it off middle stump, riding it with Courtney Walsh, who usually makes the ball come into the batsman. Nicely placed, simple two. Oh, and that's outside off stump, and a big appeal there for caught behind. But it only emanated from Best and the bowler, who seemed to respond to Best. Swung away after it pitched. Poor shot here by Robert Bailey, just follows the ball, sets off to play it on the back foot, and as it seems away and he's bouncing up, he should have left that then, should have left it, withdrawn his hands, but he keeps on following it, pushing, fishing outside the off stump. disappointed with that Robert Bailey oh that's out too it's got to be close the umpire saying no and they can't believe it a very cool umpire Cumberbatch let's have another look at this one Alan Lamb's heart would have leapt in the air oh my goodness how would you like to be the umpire in that position everybody's going up all the West Indians in the crowd and even me in the commentary box, my heart was in my mouth for Alan Lamb. Look at the umpire, not out straight away. My goodness gracious. Where did that go and how did it miss? It's moving everywhere. Just watch this ball, pitches, moves off the seam, cuts back straight over the top of middle stump. And Alan Lamb was absolutely powerless. The message must now get home to England that they are not going to win this test match. They haven't batted very well, I must say that. That's a loose shot and very close to the outside edge. Judge from Mosley, when he's finished this cricket match, tell himself that he will never beat the outside edge as frequently as this in a match again without finding it I just don't see the point in England playing such loose shots as this they've worked very hard indeed to be one up in the series and that's the first thing they mustn't jeopardize Uh, this is the, the style of play which England should have adopted from the start and some good sense has got through the straight bat, push and run see where they get and if they get closer then is the time to take the chances there you see, sawdust heaped along the way that's uh, 
They run up, run up for Courtney Walsh, run up for uh, Ian Bishop, who simply found it impossible to bowl, but this is Walsh. He's off Eight. late, Capel. Richardson overrunning the ball, Capel very late in taking off, and Lamb gives him a steer. shot and that's a wild return from Ambrose they'll pick up two more that's bad cricket under no pressure Lamb was threatening to come back for the second but there was no way he was going to do so and two overthrows into the vast empty spaces yes better cricket good orthodox stroke play playing the ball on merit putting a bit of pressure by their running on the fielder and Jeff Dujon had no chance there He's cracked it away, that's four. That's a fine shot by Capel. That's more like it, David Capel. Again, played on merit, look at it. Nice little bit of width to get that bat swinging through and no high bounce this time from Mosley. Watch the ball onto the bat, classic shot. If he can't get them in boundaries, he'll just get them in the singles, and he takes the strike. Last ball of the over. Oh, he's out. Got him, LBW. First ball. I thought it was going down the leg side. It nipped back a long way. Lamb doesn't think he was out either, and the local hero has obliged his audience. Was this missing leg stuff, or was it hissing leg stuff? Lamb is out, that's a huge blow, 106 for five. The new batsman is Russell, he's uh, just arrived out there, he's a fighter. Oh, and that's a magnificent delivery, it reared up outside off stump. Best got so excited in second slip, looked to me as if he was appealing. That won't do the batsman's confidence much good. Well, this one is on a good line, just a steady off the move it, with it, angling back at just Jack Russell. He has to play a bit more at the ball, and the extra bounce here, creating a bit of difficulty for him, and it just beats the outside edge. I'm sure Haynes would be happy to see the back of Jack Russell here. Yes, he doesn't seem to like the ball coming into his body like that. He's very determined, mind you. He's been in behind it there, he's got a lot of protection on, a lot of padding. 106 for five, they need 151 to win, 45 more. He's got that one away, into the gap, and that might be four. It's running away down to the boundary. Ambrose is very quick, he's coming around down there, picks it up one-handed, and they come back for the second. And that one's gone wide again. Will they get overthrows? Yes, they will. A problem there for Dujon, he's looking straight into the sun. And so couldn't see the ball as it came in from Ambrose. So they got three. 42 to win. It's just beginning to get dark now, and you see Desmond Haynes taking his time, make sure that his fields are in the correct position. He doesn't want to give anything away, and I'm sure he's hoping that Kirtley Ambrose can get yet, yet another wicket for the West Indies. I think his tactics here are probably to try and slow things up a little bit. He's standing alongside the batsman there, rearranging the field. D'Ambrose bowling to Russell. It's in the air and just short of the field. When he slipped there, they get themselves a run. Well, that was absolutely incredible. It's still very wet out there. <laughs> that tells the story. Have a look at him slip here. Well, Russell 
playing across, getting a leading edge, the ball pops up, watch comes across, slips. I think certainly they can go for one more wicket, they'll probably stay on while Capel's there. But after that, if they lose another wicket, these two, they've got the tail enders open and a man with a badly bruised hand, the captain Graham Gooch. I think you've got to take the light then. Go for one more wicket and that's it. This one has to bear in mind that England are one nil up in the series with only two to go after this test match. Oh, it's over the top, it's four. That one bounced and went flying away, so that takes it down to 36. Well, it's a little lucky. See, when you see a ball like this, leap off a length at Capel, jump back at him, whack him on the gloves, then you've got to bear in mind, look at this bounce. Whoa. In the air, he's dropped it. I've never seen best drop one. The pressure's got to him as well. He's coming back for the second, and that was incredible. Best dropping that one, and he hasn't looked like dropping a catch all year. He says he didn't see it. I tell you what, the light's now getting to the fieldsman. Well, Cable's tried to cut this, and it's gone, it's flown off the edge. He's tried to catch it with the hands underneath, thinking he would better attempt in that with the fingers pointing up to heaven. And I'm sure that umpire Barker will now go over to his colleague and they will offer the light to the batsman. Now, we've got to keep an eye on this. The batsmen are getting together in the centre. They want, they want gloves. I think they want <laughs> some sort of indication from Gooch what to do. The umpires are together now. They're talking about the light. Gooch is back there. Keep an eye on Graham Gooch. The umpires are coming over to the batsman now. They're offering them the light. They're saying, what do we do? What is Gooch going to say? Gooch is looking at him and they're staying out there. The indication from Gooch is stay there, get on with it. Quite right. How about that for some courage? I think the indication here is now that the West Indies have decided that they can't win this test match and I think they're probably right. I think the situation is such now that the only winners can be England and therefore they're going to go completely on the defensive. Just one slip in position. Oh, it's in the air, it's gone high in the air and down, there's no one there. They've just moved the forward short leg out of position. And unfortunately for them, there was no one nearby to catch it. There it goes, off the glove and straight up in the air. This is at a go, he's got it away, but straight to the fieldsman, that's very unlucky. Yes, so I think that's what they're going to do. Just for a little while here, they're going to try and throw the bat. What a wonderful hook shot, this. Right over the top of it and down. My goodness, to get no run for that. David Capel. What a shot that was to get nothing for. The West Indies are 1-0 down. They don't want to go 2-0 down. Oh, he's gone off to that one very wide. Didn't manage to get bat on ball. It's the end of the over, and once again, the umpires are going to offer the light to the batsman, and once again, their message is coming out onto the ground. Well, the umpires this time may turn around and offer the light to Haynes. They've been trying to get at him. There they are, having a little chat. It's too dark, they're saying. We'll offer it to the batsman again. He's saying, come in. They want to come in, it seems to me. Take the light if it's offered. They weren't offered the light. Surely the umpires have to ask them once again. I think Capel's saying, I don't know what you're on about, Captain. I really don't understand. This is becoming a real joke. So what's going on? Are they going off or are they staying on? It looks to me as if Capel's coming in. That's the end of the day's play. The thing that I can't understand is that having asked them once, they knocked it back. My understanding is that the umpires had to go to them again. And I didn't see the umpires do that. Gooch still doesn't seem to be totally satisfied with the situation. Confusion, but that sadly was the end of it. Disappointment for England. Dangerous, bad light, the decision. The West Indies survive. The match drawn, England... The oval between...